Hi and welcome to Hi on Coding. I'm your host Mohammad Azam and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use attribute based validation in your WPF which is the Windows Presentation Foundation application. I'm using a very simple application. It has first name, uh, last name and middle name and I'm going to validate the first name and the last name. Okay. And the validation actually fires like this when you click the register button so it it won't really fire uh, if you you know if you tab over or lose the focus it will only fire when you click the button so if you need this kind of functionality what you can do and I've created a custom attributes over here which is just a system dot attribute it has uh, this is my this will be the abstract attribute class or the rules class it has a message and a is valid um, method and then all the attributes that will follow this or that will inherit this will implement the is valid attribute uh, is valid method okay so item not null or empty so we are just checking that if the item is null or empty then we're going to return false if it's not null or empty it's going to return true if you go to my registration view model, you will see that how simple and how plain it is. Just have a first name, last name, and middle name. The view, the registration view model is representing whatever is on the screen. And if I run it again, you will see that the first name over here corresponds to the first name field in the registration view model. The last name corresponds to the last name field, and the middle name corresponds to the middle name. The middle name is optional, that's why it's not decorated with this no, not null or empty attribute. All the view models will drive from all the uh, view models will drive from the base view model class. And if you're gonna see this pretty it's actually straightforward. Um, it drives from the content control, it has the errors property. Now the error property is over there so that it can keep track of what is actually added or removed. So that's why I just added a Errors property, okay. Uh, property change and all that stuff. Um, at one point, I did try to implement the on loss focus, and it was firing. It was working as expected. The only problem was that the code was pretty messy, and I had to inherit the i data error info. So I have to implement that interface in the registration view model, which I just don't like at all. Okay, so that was the reason, and that that was the main. Uh, case that I just removed that for the time being. So we have a registration, we have a broken rule which is just a property name and message. I don't really think that you need a has error so you can delete that. Let me see if I can delete that over here if you're not using it. Then we come to the dashboard which is the actual uh, WPF window. Okay, you can see it's a simple grid and well, you don't have to worry about this because we have removed this functionality. So it's a very simple grid with columns, like two columns and a number of rows. Then we move down to the text box. The first name text box is uh, having the style, but we don't really care about the style because we are not doing that on loss focus kind of validation. So if you move down, the errors is this is the errors which will be bind to the items control and which will display the message uh, as a label okay so if i run the application if i say register button so this red thing that is displayed over here the box this is actually the items control binded to the errors collection which is in the view model right over here The, I made it as an observable collection and not a list so that I can keep track of what is being added or displayed. This is also a dependency property so that the UI will be consistent with, uh, with what, what, what is when added to this thing and removed. Okay. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, there are a couple of ways that you can you can fire the on loss focus uh, validation and um, actually actually we're going to take a look at it in the next screencast 
But if you want a very simple validation, just like this one, uh, where the, the validation is only fired when you click the registration button and not on the, on the lost focus. So if I say over here, oh, that's okay. I need to enter last name, enter last name, and then, then there are no uh, broken rules, I guess. So that's pretty much it. Um, I, if you like, you can use this code. It will be uploaded on High On Coding, and you can download it if you kind of like this kind of framework, which is only invoked when you are uh, invoking some sort of action, just like pressing a button. Then this can be this can be a good, um, you know, good way to do it. Uh, the other reason I like it is that I can decorate it with attributes, and I think this is very important for me because. I don't want to go through that I data error info and then compare. It just gets really ugly really fast. But this is very simple, just decorated with the attribute and it just works. That's pretty much it and stay tuned on High Encoding for more screencasts. Thank you very much.